Hey there everybody, Pete Pardo here from Sea Tranquility. Welcome to another edition of Top 10 Songs. Today we're going to look at the short, brief, but packed to the gills with quality content discography of Max Webster. Now I mentioned discography, of course this is a Top 10 Songs show, but these albums, you know, it's funny. I, in getting ready to put this thing together... I was like, you know what, I love all the Max Webster albums, but there's not that many of them, so I should be able to put together a fairly quick top ten songs. Eh, wrong, okay? This was quite the challenge, and uh, I was up for it, of course, but it's going to be another one of those instances where my top ten today could change at any minute. There, pro I would probably say half of them are well entrenched in my top 10 for various reasons, but man, they have so many great songs. Again, for a band that only has a handful of albums, it's, it's amazing how many great tunes are floating around those albums. And again, another one of those bands that just criminally underrated, uh, you know, how they weren't like a million selling band is just beyond me. There's just so many like tunes on their albums that, you know, remind me of other bands who made it really, really big. Um, and they really should have, you know, you hear little bits of like kind of the tubes and Toto and Rush and yes. And it's just like, it's just brilliant musicians, brilliant songwriters. The vocals are outstanding. You know, Kim Mitchell's guitar playing and singing just great. The keyboards, I mean, a great band with a bunch of great albums and a lot of really great songs. So let me, I'm going to give you my top 10 again. It was really tough, like choosing some over others. And, you know, in any given day, this might change a little bit, but you know, I'm feeling pretty good about this top 10. It's a strong top 10. Uh, but again, curious to see what you guys think and what your top 10 Max Webster songs would be. So coming in at number 10 off the debut Max Webster self-titled album, uh, the final track on the album, the prog rock gem, Lily. Again, you know, Max Webster, a great hard rock band, but they could also write pop tunes, but they can they could also deliver stunning 70s progressive rock, okay? Lily is a great example of that. Just some fantastic keyboard and synth textures and guitar playing and a lot of different changes going on through that song. Love it. Great, great stuff. So Lily from Max Webster, number 10. Coming in at number 9, off the Mutiny Up My Sleeve album, which is a great one, uh, Beyond the Moon. Again, hard rocking, but quite proggy. And uh, these guys did a lot of tunes with Moon in the title. Obviously, there's a little kind of a, a theme there. Uh, and you'll see a couple of them, in, well, actually probably all of them in my list. Uh, coming in at number 8, Back to the self-titled album, uh, the raging hard rocker coming off the moon. More moons. Beyond the moon, coming off the moon, another one coming up. Yeah, so uh, a great, great rocker. Uh, man, Kim Mitchell's guitar playing, those riffs and solos. He very, uh, God, what's the word to describe Kim Mitchell's guitar playing? I don't know, just really melodic, but man, he could do like, you know, almost heavy metal type riffing uh, and he had a lot of Frank Zappa in him as well. And I think a lot of the arrangements on some of the tunes also had a, uh, a bit of Zappa influence, right? Um, so that's number eight. Coming at number seven, off the Universal Juveniles album. Another favorite of mine, uh, In the World of Giants. Very cool tune. Good anthem, hard rocker. Uh, but again, a lot of prog influences there. Coming in at number six, talk about straight up prog rock uh, from A Million Vacations. How about. Charmonium, or Carmonium, Carmonium, Charmonium, however they say that, however they say it, it's just a fantastic song. Um, I hear bits of Yes and Genesis in there, and just wonderful stuff. Really, really good melodic prog rock rocker from the band. Uh, coming in at number five, uh, staying on the same album, A Million Vacations. I believe this track was recorded live. Uh, Research at Beach Resorts. Blistering rocker there. Again, man, if you want to hear some of Kim Mitchell's best guitar work, listen to that one. A fun, fun tune uh, that I always dug quite a bit from a great album. All right, coming in at number four, also from uh, Universal Juveniles, Drive and Desire. I love the riffs. 
cranking riffs. Uh, it's just, this is just a really good kind of like headbanger, fist pumper type of a tune. Uh, and they have a lot of those. A lot of, it, it, again, a lot of varied stuff going on in these Max Webster albums. You know, like I said, you get some pop songs and some, you know, really crunchy hard rock tunes and some straight on prog stuff. And a lot of tunes that just kind of mixed it all in the same song. And you even had some crazy, like, kind of Zappa, kind of wacky, fusion-y type stuff, too. A lot of those as well. In fact, you'll see in my um, honorable mentions, I got quite a few of those. Uh, so that's number four. Coming in, all right, so top three. Some really great stuff in the top three. Uh, and then number three is the title track to High Class in Borrowed Shoes. The song High Class in Borrowed Shoes. Brilliant. Uh, rampaging heavy rock riffs in that. Again, just really catchy vocal harmonies and chorus and... Uh, amazing song an amazing song stacks up against anything anybody else ever did love it uh, and again just I hate to keep harping on it with Max Webster but so many of their tunes should have been enormous right some of these albums just should have been you know million plus sellers it's, you know not just in Canada I mean the rest of the world the rest of the world should have taken notice of this band uh, number two might have been one of their bigger kind of singles or radio staples. I always love this song. And it's one of those tunes that like, okay, well, if bands like, you know, Toto and Ario Speedwagon and Styx can pump out like good melodic rock songs and get played on the radio and all that kind of stuff and make a lot of money, Paradise Skies off A Million Vacations should have been that song for Max Webster. I don't understand how that wasn't an enormous hit here in the U.S. I mean, man, is that a catchy tune. A ultra catchy tune, kind of great, like catchy arena rock song, you know? Pop hooks galore in that. I love it. Always love Paradise Skies. And my number one favorite Max Webster tune, sticking on the High Class and Borrowed Shoes album, also sticking with the theme of the moon, you know what it's going to be, in context of the moon. -da 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 -da. What a great tune, man. I just love it. Great riffs. Love the vocals. Guitar solo's killer. It's just a barnstorming, barnstorming song uh, that, again, combines everything that I love so much about Max Webster. So some great tracks there, but, you know, what about some of the other stuff? Man, so many good stuff. So many, so many good stuff. So many good songs. Uh, how about let's go back, honorable mentions. Let's go back to the first album. How about Hangover? How much of a kick-ass song is that to kick off that album, huh? Uh, how about uh, Here Come the Cats? Toronto Tontos, that, that was in my early version of my top 10. Uh, Only Your Nose Knows, another really strong cut from that album. Uh, from High Class and Borrowed Shoes. Uh, how about the lovely little ditty Diamonds Diamonds? I also was in my top 10 and got booted at the very last minute. I really dig that a, a lot. That's a lot mellower than a lot of the other songs we've been talking about, but it's just a really lovely tune with a great melody. Uh, Gravity, America's Veins. Just a crazy heavy rocker there. Another tune that I was felt really bad about leaving out of my top ten. Uh, oh, War, another really good one. Uh, Rainchild, really catchy rocker there. From Mutiny Up My Sleeve, how about Lip Service? Astonish Me, Let Your Man Fly, The Party, and the intense Hawaii, right? Again, the influence of Frank Zappa all over a lot of these tracks. Uh, from A Million Vacation, Vacations, I should say. How about uh, Night Flights? The title track. That's a real good one. Uh, Look Out. Very catchy tune. I like that one a lot. Another tune that had hit potential. Uh, same thing with Let Go of the Line. Right? And the uh, incredible, heavy, proggy, complex Rascal Hoody. Or Howdy. Rascal Howdy. Something like that. Uh, from Universal Juveniles. How about Check? April in Toledo. Yeah, I'm a big fan of that song. Uh, Juveniles Don't Stop. I wanted to include that in my top ten. Big fan of that one. Uh, Battle Scar, the tune they did with uh, the guys from Rush. It's pretty cool, kind of silly but funny hard rocker. Uh, Blue River Liquor Shine. That's a good one. And how about Cry Out Your Life? Okay, another catchy tune. Uh, let's not forget from the Diamonds Diamonds uh, compilation, which is basically a greatest hits album, uh, once the band had broken up. They actually put together a couple new tracks on that, um, new studio songs, but uh, one of them I really like, Overnight Sensation. That's a really good hard rock tune. Really dig it a lot. So uh, some great songs. 
You, and really, there's really no bad songs in the entire, you know, I could have just named every song off every album, but I didn't want to do that. I wanted to pick out some of the ones that really mean the most to me, the ones that I like the most. So uh, let's go back over my top 10. At number one, In Context of the Moon. Number two, Paradise Skies. Number three, High Class and Borrowed Shoes. Number four, Drive and Desire. Number five, Research at Beach Resorts. Number six, Charmonium. Number seven, In the World of Giants. Number eight, Coming Off the Moon. Number nine, Beyond the Moon. And number 10, Lily. So there you have it. The great Canadian band Max Webster. Top 10 songs. You know how it goes. Watch the whole video and then post your top 10. Curious to see what you think. Um, curious to see what some of your favorite albums are from uh, Max Webster. I mean, there's not a lot of them and they're all favorites of mine, but, uh, you know, some obviously more than others. And, uh, that's that. So this is on the web at www.seatranquility.org. We're on Facebook. We're on Twitter. We're here on the mighty YouTube. Quite often during the week, i uh, got a saga show coming up soon. Um, not sure it'll be sometime over the next couple days. Uh, we hope to have a questions and answers this weekend if I can fit it in. Guys, it's been crazy. Uh, as well as we got some guest stars coming on the show this weekend. So hopefully we'll we'll do that. Uh, Gary Moore Top 10 Songs, Thin Lizzy, uh Best to Worst Albums, Dio Top 10 Songs, and whatever else we can scrounge up. i got a couple new product things I want to talk about, too. So uh, we'll get to that when we can. So uh, thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe. Tell all your friends. We'll see you real soon. Thanks for your support, guys.